A lot of people talk about becoming successful, the hustle, the work that it takes to build something that lasts. And it's true, to achieve that massive goal, that incredible vision you have, it's going to take some serious work over a prolonged period of time. Now, many entrepreneurs depend on motivation a lot to keep going. Don't get me wrong, being motivated is great, but it's not always dependable. Imagine if you were productive only when you felt 100% motivated. You see the deficiency in this plan. But what if you were able to naturally be productive without depending on any external input? That is why building habits is so important to achieving massive goals. When you build a habit, you are able to systematically become productive because achieving massive goals, building that business empire, or even working on your own self will take small consistent steps every day to make it a reality. See, all of us already have natural habits that shape our lives, and the interesting part is that most of us are not even aware of them. Before we begin, let me ask you something, but be honest. When you woke up this morning, what did you do first? Did you check your phone or did you pick up a book? What route did you take to work this morning? See, we think of these choices as well thought out decisions, but they are actually habits. You don't really think about which shoelace you're gonna tie first. You just do it. These choices are routines and behaviors which do not require much mental effort to take action on. For example, have you ever driven home from work and realized that you don't even remember how you got back to your house? You were just back home. All of these habits are automatic. You don't have to think about them. They do not require much conscious effort. They become natural tendencies. This is actually our brain's way to save energy and become more efficient. But just because our brains want to become more efficient doesn't mean that the habits we build are the most effective. Our brains can't distinguish between good or bad habits. Your brain's job is just to systemize the behavior into habits. Think about this. Over time, these little behaviors such as the food we eat, how we spend our money, how we talk to our kids, how we socialize, how we live our everyday life start becoming natural tendencies. Over time, these habits have a huge impact on the outcome of our lives, our business, and our relationships. So in order to build productive habits, we must understand how habits are formed. A habit has three core components, the trigger, the routine, and the reward. We call this the habit loop. The trigger is a cue that tells your brain to go on automatic mode and which habit to use. For example, is there something that just makes you upset? A lot of people call them hot buttons. These hot buttons are cues that trigger your brain to go on automatic mode and you just get upset. A habit cannot be formed if there is no trigger. A simple example of a habit is a dog, a bell, and food. When the bell goes off, the trigger, food is given to the dog, the routine. In the end, the dog feels pleasure after eating this food, which is the reward. In human psychology, we have five different types of triggers that can set off a habit. Number one, time. Different times in your day can trigger different habits. For example, a lot of people are more productive in the morning hours than in the evening hours. Other people are more creative at nighttime than during the day. Being a night owl or an early bird has a lot to do with our brain's natural habits and the triggers the time of day has on us. Number two, location. Have you ever walked into your kitchen and opened the refrigerator without actually looking for something? This is a great example of a location trigger. You can actually control your environment to trigger a sense of productivity and achievement, which helps you be more productive. If you pay attention to very successful people, they have a few things in their environment that have a specific trigger for them. One of my mentors has a clock with a time bomb attached to it. It's a fake time bomb, of course, but he uses this to remind him that time is running out. This trigger gets him into a productive mode because, as he says, I can't procrastinate with a time palm next to me. Number three, preceding events. This is when an event triggers a habit. For example, many successful people start their day by making their bed, having an early workout, or meditating. These events trigger them to be more productive during the day. Number four, emotional state. Your emotional state can be a huge trigger to cue a habit. For example, when you feel down or upset, what do you automatically do? Many people become sedentary when they feel down or upset. They might just sit there and browse social media or watch some TV. Others have more proactive habits. Some head to the gym or go for a run. But your emotional state can be a huge trigger for habits. Number five, other people. 
The people around you can be a massive trigger of habits. Have you ever noticed that you can act a little different around certain people? Even when you are not planning on behaving a certain way, it ends up happening. That is because other people can trigger a behavioral habit on you. Now, these are just triggers. A habit consists of a trigger, a routine, and a reward. When these steps are done repeatedly one after the other, they become automatic. For example, after you come back from work, which is the trigger, you sit in front of the TV, which is the routine, and you get a surge of dopamine while watching a TV show, which is the reward. If done repeatedly, it starts becoming an automatic behavior. Now, once the trigger, the routine, and the reward become a habit, there is a new element that is created which makes it very difficult to break a habit. Let's go back to the dog example. You ring the bell, you feed the dog, and the food brings the dog pleasure. Studies have shown that when this process becomes a habit, the trigger, in this case, the bell, makes the dog salivate, even though there is no food. This is a widely used example of classical conditioning, but the important takeaway in terms of understanding habits is that the trigger created a craving for the reward. Once a habit is formed, the brain starts anticipating the reward. This is why it can be very difficult to break a habit because once the trigger is activated, our brain automatically begins craving the reward. So the simple act of coming back home might trigger the craving to sit on that couch and watch TV. Now that we understand the psychology behind a habit, let's use this same psychology to hack the habit loop and change our habits. We know that a habit is made up of three core elements, the trigger, the routine, and the reward. So what if we start playing with these elements? One option is to avoid the trigger altogether. If there's no trigger, there is no habit. For example, if exposure to a certain person triggers a negative habit in you, you can decide to cut ties with that person and therefore avoiding the trigger. Now, there's a limit of how far you can take this. For example, we cannot always control our emotional state. So if that is a trigger, it would be a little hard to avoid that trigger. Now, if avoiding the trigger is not an option, what if we mess with the third element, the reward? This is what we call negative reinforcement, and it can be effective in certain situations. For example, let's say that you want to stop going on social media so much. So every time you open up your social media app, you have to give $10 to a random person on the street. That takes away the reward, so eventually your brain associates the trigger with a punishment instead of the reward, making your brain avoid the routine automatically. Now, if that method is a little harsh, then we might have to play with the second element of the habit loop. This is the harder way to hack the habit loop, but also the more permanent way to change a habit. If we avoid the trigger, the habit loop is still there, ready to be put in motion if it gets triggered. If we stop negatively reinforcing a habit, we run a chance to fall back into the original habit. But if we change the routine, we might be able to change the habit. The other way we can hack the habit loop is by changing routines as soon as the trigger is presented. There is a small window between trigger, craving, and routine. And if we're able to hijack the routine before our brain goes into automatic mode, we can hack the habit loop and use the framework of the existing habit to incorporate a different routine. This means the same trigger automatically triggers a new habit. The first time I noticed someone hijacking somebody else's habit loop was Tony Robbins. As soon as he sees somebody going into a negative emotional state, which is the trigger, he breaks the pattern. He says something out of the ordinary or shocking sometimes before leading the conversation into a more productive place. Here's a great example from his Netflix documentary, I'm Not Your Guru. What makes you hate yourself? Is it the red shoes? What? Is it the red shoes? No. Are you sure? Because they're fucking red. <laughs> Don't you be smiling like that. You fuck everything up. If you smile like that too much, you'll want to stick around. So, if you're able to hijack the routine and do it consistently, you will be able to modify your habits. So, choose a habit that you want to change. Now, think of the alternative habit that you want to create in place of the old habit. And for the next 21 days, focus on changing the old routine and start practicing the new one. As soon as you feel the trigger of a bad habit, break the pattern. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you snap yourself out of the routine, you can then practice your new habit. This will ensure that you hijack the habit loop by breaking the pattern before your brain goes into automatic mode. As always guys, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.